Welcome everybody, welcome to another episode of Lazio Lounge. Again, not the best night, but we are getting used to it, unfortunately. But to be honest with you, and you know that Alistair McKenzie is at the stadium, you know that it's going to be a bad performance for Lazio. And this wasn't a, a big surprise. I'm Vittorio Campanile, with me tonight, as you can imagine, there's not Alistair McKenzie, but we have Sean McIntosh. Sean, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for having me, Vittorio, my pleasure. We'll have to talk about what you're doing there in Texas for Lazio. That's amazing. Uh, it's an honor to have you uh, with me tonight. Unfortunately, uh, as we were talking before, it's, it's not a perfect night, but uh, things happen. It's going to be a long season, and um, I think probably this is the worst moment for Lazio uh, in the season. I don't know if you agree. Uh, I would say so. It's it's a tough one, a uh, tough one for my first podcast. Um, you know, there's there's been a lot of moments where we, we try to keep our heads up, and uh, and this one's probably the hardest one to do that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because the fact is, um, I think tonight there are plenty of things to talk about. Uh, let's start with the uh, Inzaghi decision. I was surprised by the starting eleven. Now it looks like. Uh, uh, we know that Miliko Savic wasn't feeling well, and so he was out. Lulic wasn't feeling well, he was out. Radu as well. And it looks like in the morning as well, um, Lukaku uh, didn't feel that well. So for this reason, probably, I imagine, uh, Inzaghi shuffle the, the starting eleven, uh, playing Nani and Immobile in front, Luis Alberto with the line of the midfielder, and Felipe Anderson. Um, uh, on the left of the midfield. Uh, for me, it was a very strange formation, uh, very offensive as well, but very strange, especially uh, Wallace again starting uh, after, you know, he didn't convince us at all. I don't know. I was shocked. What was your impression? Yeah, I, I had a, a ba- mixed bag of emotions. Uh, I liked that Inzaghi found a way to include Nani uh, Felipe Anderson and Luis Alberto. It was it was nice to see that, uh, but at the same time, I didn't like that he removed the link uh, between Anderson and Immobile by putting him out wide. Um, they, they, I feel like they had found a connection, and by inserting Nani uh, up top with him, um, I mean we saw Nani basically did nothing uh, for the rest of the the first half. And I think Inzaki. Yeah, I think Inzaghi conceded that uh, that starting 11 wasn't the right one with the quick substitutions to start the second. Uh, it's odd that uh, it seems that our most reliable players were all the ones out with sickness. Um, a, a very uh, risky lineup without Radu, um, Lulic, um, and of course Milinkovic Savic. But, uh, you know, I, I was curious. I thought maybe I'd have some hope that we would find some offense. But uh, like I said, a lot of our reliable players were missing. So you could see that. Uh, throughout the match. Yes, I agree. Um, I don't know if you thought the same thing. I was happy about um, Nani starting, even though I think for a player like him, it's very difficult in a formation so attacking like 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 this one. I thought, uh, as you were saying, he didn't play well uh, at all in the, in the first half, but I think he struggled to find the position you know, you have uh, uh, Felipe Anderson that was at the left, then on the right. Um, yep. Chiri Mobile striker. Luis Alberto, that, that is a player that moves around a lot. You really don't have... Uh, Nani didn't find the position where to put himself because, you know, there was all of these other players moving around. And I think uh, it's... How can I put it? I, I, I don't blame Nani. I thought it was the wrong formation to play him tonight. Perhaps, and I don't even think he played particularly poor. I just thought he was invisible. Um, and maybe it was best to not include him and, and keep him on as a sub and remove Felipe at some point. But Felipe Anderson played so well, um, it, it would have been hard to do that. But he was definitely, whether it was out of position, uh, an off match, um, he was pretty invisible to me. I think, I think Nani did a couple of good things, uh, you know, a couple of assists, etc., but, yeah, he was moving around trying to find the position and never found it, even because Bologna was pretty much defending with 10 men. So it was, it was really difficult. But, yeah, you know, uh, it's funny because 
Alistair is not here, but a couple of a month ago when he was saying now arrives uh, easy matches for Lazio, I said wait a second because if you look back, Lazio struggled more against the small team that comes and defend, put the bus in front of the in, uh, in front of the goal than the other that give you space and try to win the match. And and right. you know it's what happened against Cagliari, it's what happened tonight. Bologna didn't come to Rome to to try to win the match, tried only to defend. And Lazio struggle. I don't know. Did you have the same impression? Yeah, I, I mean, we knew what Bologna was going to do, and and I think uh, offensively, I, I thought Lazio did an okay, not great job of finding players in the box. Uh, those players, once they had the ball at their feet, had no decisions. I, I, I thought nobody had um, any thoughts of what to do with the ball. Uh, we saw Parolo had a couple chances. Uh, he was making some nice runs into the box and finding the ball at his feet. Um, just wasn't able to do much with it. And, and same for Immobile. Um, I, I thought there was a lack of decisiveness uh, from everybody. Uh, we, we did an okay job finding players in the box, but um, I don't know what it is with these, with these uh, mid-table clubs. And I know we expect them to park the bus, but uh, it seems like we also find ourselves uh, with a little bit lack of quality uh, when we need it. You know you said something really perfect, that really tells you how Lazio played tonight. You said when Luis Alberto, Felipe Anderson had the ball, the other players didn't move to create the space to create, to dictate the pass. That's what's missing right now. If you see, and, and you said it, you know, when Immobile had the ball, there's no one moving, trying to create chances, etc. And so if you have a team like Bologna that defends that defend with 10 men in front of the box, it, it's complicated, it's complicated. And this is what's missing. Now, I don't know if it's because it has been a long season. Lazio played a lot of matches, played Thursday uh, at Kiev. So it's, you know, it's, it's a decent trip. Not, not that much, but not that small. Uh, if there's tiredness or something else, because as you were saying correctly, Lazio didn't move tonight and uh, made it pretty much easy to Bologna to defend if, like that. Yeah, I, I thought it was way too easy uh, for Bologna to defend. Um, you know, I, I agree with that. It's, it was very, very easy for them. And um, again, no, no thought uh, once you had the ball. Uh, there wasn't much movement and, you know, it, it made it simple. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I got the impression that in the first half and in the second half, Chiro Mobile was too often alone in the box. Uh, Felipe Anderson doesn't tend to occupy the box and go and play uh, inside the box and the same thing does Nani and uh, Luis Alberto they try to move outside the penalty box the only thing changed uh, in the second half when Casado entered but at that point I thought Lazio was too tired to really try something special but that's something uh, we have to work about yeah, I would have liked to have seen, um, I know we, we joke about Caicedo, but I, I would have liked to have seen him at least provide uh, a partnership with Immobile a little bit earlier in the match, um, just to try something different um, and give ourselves a chance. Uh, when I saw the starting eleven, I know uh, it was written that it was a 3-5-1-1, but I was nearly hoping that it was a 4-3-3. I thought that that team would have been better for a 4-3-3. Obviously, Wallace should have slide to the, to the right and uh, Marusic should have been the, the left defender. And uh, it would have been, again, a very attacking midfielder with Leiva, Parolo and uh, Luis Alberto. But probably Felipe Anderson and Nani on the wingers, that, that's probably the best solution for them to play together. Yeah, and Felipe Anderson wasn't even. I, I know they had some, had him slotted at the at the left wing, but he was he started off playing at the right uh, mm -hmm. when the match kicked off. So I know he was all over the place, and um, you know maybe the guys didn't know what formation they were playing either. Yes, because the the fact is that uh, yesterday Inzaghi tried another formation. Then probably this morning when uh, when uh, the condition of Lukaku uh, got worse. And, uh, and Radu got worse, then probably he had to find a different solution. As well, I, f I forgot Patrick as well. Uh, he, he, he was injured, so he couldn't play tonight. So, uh, to be honest, uh, I think Inzaghi made a mistake, 
but it wasn't easy with all those players uh, had to give up uh, the night before and so you didn't have a, a training to try the, the, the starting 11 you want to play. Yeah, it seems like he was handcuffed with lack of options, which is difficult. Um, but, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, it was the wrong 11. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I can understand seeing a, a little bit the starting uh, 11 of Bologna that was very defensive. He maybe thought, OK, I'm going to try it like that and see if, uh, if we can do something. But, you know, uh, Bologna scored after two minutes and <laughs> that was pretty much the end of the plan for Simone Inzaghi because you're already down and you know that the other team is going to defend and uh, you're going to struggle. Um, Greek staff uh, on Twitter... Uh, fight till the end, two routes to the Champions League still open, one involving a chance for a trophy, Avanti. Yeah, what, what do you think? Uh, what's the easy way? Arriving in the fourth spot of the Serie A or winning the Europe League to get the Champions League? Well, I wish there was an easy way. Um, you know, the, the Europa is... We, we've got a nice run of form, uh, so you would think maybe we can do it through that. Uh, but uh, but it's not going to be easy. Uh, we still have an opponent in Salzburg that that is playing well, um, and I know a lot of pundits want to look at that as if Lazio is is the team to advance. But I think uh, that would be a little bit foolish. And and you know I, I think there's a great opportunity in Europa. Um, but honestly, I, and I know it's difficult right now because of the run of form in Serie A. But you know we're we're right there. We play the two teams that we're competing against for the Champions League spots. So um, it's hard right now. I'm as frustrated as, as any Laziale, but it's right there. And, and if we beat Inter and we beat Roma, two tall tasks. But if we do that, then, then we're there for, for our spot. Yes, I, I, I think you have to put in the mix even AC Milan. They are playing better. They are nearly there now, so... Uh, yeah, I, I think they're going to be in. The, well, we have to see what happened in the derby, in the in the Milan derby, because you know one of the two is, is going to lose points. So if Milan wins that, then yeah, they are back in the in the fight for the Champions League spot. If if they lose, then maybe they're out. But this would put Inter in a in a better position against us. So I don't know. Maybe a draw would be better for us. Uh, um, yeah, and, you know, obviously, in, in, in Serie A, we are reliant on some of the outcomes from the other matches. And in Europa, we're not. We have our, the destiny is in our hands. So maybe in, in that regard, you know, Europa is probably the best uh, possibility for us right now. Even though, uh, as you were saying, Salzburg, it's, it's not an easy match. Lazio probably is favorite, but uh, Lazio has to play his best to... to to go through because uh, you know Salzburg I think it's 25 match in a row they don't lose at home in Europe so this tells you a lot of things so I, I last you have to play the best but the thing is they're still Atletico Madrid they're still Arsenal they're still a couple of very good teams so you know it's at, at the end you're gonna have to play some of these top teams so it's not gonna be easy but yeah uh, you know even the Serie A is not gonna be easy you have Mm, a lot of tough match and you have good teams uh, I think Inter and uh, Roma are now playing better than a month ago so it's going to be complicated uh, Paul Guinness on Twitter Wallace is awful and Nani not up to it sadly for me the league will finish as it is now team look tired and lethargic what's your thought? I mean it's, uh, it's a recurring story with Wallace um... You know, having him in the starting 11, it, it was a question. Um, you know, that's something that if we are going to be playing in Champions League next season, knock on wood, uh, we've got to address that. Uh, I think the team is tired, but so is everybody else. And, you know, we can't use that as an excuse. Um, I mean, we've got to uh, – we, we mentioned it to start. The starting 11 was questionable, and we lost a lot of our reliable players uh, without having Radu – and uh, and without having a, a Lulic and um, Milikovic Savic, I mean, uh, unfortunately, we were forced to choose between Wallace and Bastos, and you know, you you they're they're one and the same. Um, so it's it's tough. 
Uh, honestly, I don't know if you agree. I, I prefer Bastos to Wallace. Uh, this season he started very well. Then, what was it? Around November he started making a couple of mistakes, but still not as bad as Wallace. Uh, but it's it's a sort of mystery why he he's not playing that much anymore. Uh, but yeah, if I have to choose, probably Bastos, Bastos would be my option. Even though this morning, uh, today there was Casares on the bench and he should be fully fit now. So that could be another option. Yeah, I guess that's the biggest question mark for me is is why isn't Casares playing? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's another question to ask Simone Inzaghi. I thought... Uh, the fact that he often gets injured is something that uh, Inzaghi didn't like. You know you, you know that playing him, there is a risk you're going to lose a, a sub to take him out because he's injured. But Sure. But, uh, but we, had to, we had to take out our defender anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You know, Wallace was terrible. No, no excuse. Uh, he, he didn't have any... Uh, he didn't make any mistakes in the goal, but a couple of times he was... Uh, dangerous, very dangerous. So I thought Inzaghi had to take him off even because he got a yellow card. The only positive thing about today is that he got a yellow card so he won't be able to play next match. <laughs> I know. I know. So. I thought the same thing. Um, <laughs> li- limits the options for Inzaghi, but one that will take uh, most days. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I hope this, this break that probably comes in a perfect time for Lazio... Uh, give the chance to to recover some of the injured players, you know, Milinkovic Savic, uh, uh, and and to give a little bit of time to to relax and uh, to come back and find the right form to the other players. Because even Immobile today, I don't think he maybe he should twice on target tonight. I don't remember. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, he seems to be tired. Um, and and in the past, it seemed like the international break tends to uh, happen at the worst time for Lazio when we have a nice run of form. So um, it, it's good that this one's happening uh, at, uh, at at this juncture because we're not playing well and our guys could use the break. So um, it is it is perfect timing. We'll see if uh, if Parolo and Immobile tend, uh, end up playing for the national team because I'd, I'd like for them to get some rest. Yeah, they have been cold, so I think they're going. Um, did you have the impression that... Even if we have a very offensive uh, formation tonight, still Immobile in the box was too alone. He was often marked by two defenders. Yeah, he's either alone up top or uh, he tends to be too close to our own defense, chasing yeah. after the balls. And, and, you know, it's it's a great quality for him as a striker. He's not just a uh, in-the-box number nine. He's somebody that puts in work. But a lot of times when he does that, uh, it, it tends to leave options up front um, pretty empty. So he's either in the box alone or he's nowhere to be found because he's running back on, on defense and, and providing some assist. Or you'll see him out wide uh, when you want him in the box. So, um, I, you know, I, I think that without Sergei Milinkovic Savic in the match, who tends to provide some um, – some assistance there, you know, he, he's somebody yeah. that can win the ball in places um, and, and put Cheeto in the right spots. You know, I, I, I thought he was alone, but, you know, when he did have the ball, he also failed to provide a, a little bit of quality. Yes, I think um, only Milinkovic Savic, as you were saying, and Parolo are the other players, the only two players that tend to get in the box when the cross is coming. Uh, Felipe Anderson and Luis Alberto are more people sitting outside the box, ready for the deflection, maybe shot on target after the deflection. So I thought that, uh, and again, Nani didn't have a, any chances in the box, so I don't know if he's the kind of player who like to get in the box and, and uh, get his chances. But yeah, I thought this was, this was missing. Um, yeah, first... Par- Parolo was the only one to me that, uh, you know, he did a nice job of finding some of those um, positions in the box and making the runs, but... Um, like I said earlier, I just he just couldn't find um, that finishing touch, but he did provide yeah. something offensively, making some runs for for some of the guys. Yeah, absolutely. And he's the the last one to give up. He's always fighting on on the ball. Uh, so there are the first quotes of Simone Inzaghi just after the match. 
Uh, mistake of Strakos after the goal. I have to see it again. Uh, we should have won, but we have to accept the, the, the draw. We tried. We shot on target 21 times. I don't remember all those shots on target. Anyway, I'm not worried. Uh, we are here to stay on top of the ranks of the table. We'll try our best. Um, Wallace uh, got a yellow card, so that's why I make the change. Nani played well like the others. Uh, we found a team uh, very who tried only to defend. Lulic, Rado and Milinkovic are fundamental for us, but they were injured. Uh, everybody's running now, uh, Inter, Roma and Milan, but we have to try and stay there. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, nothing special. Okay, he's not, he's not worried. I am, honestly. I don't know you, well, about yourself. I'm really scared. Yeah, I'm worried. I, I don't like that he talked about the 20 shots on, on Fran, or on, uh, that were taken by Lazio. I'm looking at some of the statistics right now. And uh, like you said, I don't know where those shots were. But uh, it does say that they took 21 shots. But only four of them were on frame. And, um, you know, three of those were, were, were probably not quality. Um, and, and so... I don't think that was a sign. We had 57% possession uh, in a match against a team like Bologna. You'd think that we would have high 60s. Uh, we tend to have a lot more possession against teams like this, so we didn't even dominate that. Um, I, I'd be worried. I, I'd, you know, I'd like to see a little bit more uh, from Inzaghi here. Even because, thinking a little bit of the match, I don't remember a great save of Mirante. I honestly don't. No, I, I don't either. Uh, most of the shots were taken from well outside the box. They were over the bar. Um, I know Parolo had one uh, that, uh, that, that would have been wide anyways um, that sent the keeper diving, but uh, we didn't have many opportunities. No, no. I, I thought we were very good to get the ball near the box and have created a dangerous chance, but we were bad in finishing. All the assists was wrong. Or the, the the player who shot shot it wide or too too slow too too easy for the keeper. We were something in the last month or so. We are missing the the final part. You know, you do everything well. You get in the box and then uh, you don't finish it. That's what is missing now for Lazio. I think. I don't know if it's only related to the deeper form of Chiro Mobile or it's the rest of the team as well that is not helping. Uh, I'd say it's a little bit of both. I mean, Cheeto, look, was playing uh, like a world-class striker for most of the season, and I think it was brought up time and time again. If we lose Cheeto, uh, there there would be some problems. And while he's on the pitch, it's not the same Cheeto. And um, now he's not getting all of the opportunities, but uh, we need him to take advantage of the few that he does get. And uh, right now, that's not happening. Salad Zemani, uh, poor tactics from Inzaghi. He shouldn't let Parolo play so high up. Nani should should stay on the pitch. <sighs> yeah, you know, uh, I don't blame Nani. I don't think it was his fault uh, tonight. I think simply it was difficult for him to find the right position. And yeah, I don't know if Inzaghi was thinking already yesterday to this type of formation or he was forced by all the injury. But yeah, I was surprised and uh, it didn't pay out. We can say it now, but it's too easy after the match, you know, saying, yeah, the wrong decision. Of course, of course. I think uh, looking at the lineup, some people would have been excited to see that, that type of attacking players on. But, uh, but I would have preferred having Felipe Anderson a little bit closer to, uh, to Chido, just from what we've seen in his form. But, you know, I'd say, uh, yeah, again, Nani, to me, didn't do anything. Um, he didn't necessarily play poor, but he didn't do anything to earn a... Um, starting spot or, or any time once uh, Milinkovic, Savic and the rest of the guys are back healthy. Yeah, yeah. let's hope that Milinkovic, Savic after the break come back, uh, come back and uh, in his top form as he was at the beginning of the season. He was astonishing. But since January, I don't know, tiredness. I don't believe he's uh, distracted by the transfer rumors. I think he's more tired or, yeah, maybe he was already yeah. injured. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't believe any of the rumors that he's distracted. I, I think uh, I think that would be um, too easy to say. Um, I, I do believe he, like a, a lot of other uh, the players, are just tired. Um, the guys that uh, 
that are playing at a higher level on the team, which which it's not many. I think there were two standouts tonight, and that was Felipe Anderson and, and Luis Felipe. Um, and, and those are both players that didn't play a, a ton all season um, that are a little bit fresher. So um, I, I, I'd say uh, that that's a big piece is the guys that are struggling are, are probably tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's not forget that Lazio had a very long season and it's not finished yet. So we have to see if it's maybe time to do a bigger turnover. I don't know. Maybe that could be an option. The problem is, that, and we said it before, there's not a real sub for Ciro Immobile. Caseto, it's a different player. I don't think he can do the job Ciro Immobile is doing now. No, I agree. I, I don't think uh, if we want to secure points um, and move on in Europa, uh, we have no choice but to play Ciro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Let's talk about the positive thing. I think Lucas Leva again was, was incredible. Not only for the goal, but for his leadership, for how many balls he, he stole from uh, the feet of the Bologna players tonight. I think he was great. Yeah, he, uh, he, does, he does Lucas Leva things. I think he's as consistent as anybody on the team. I, I think uh, I, I'd put uh, Parolo um, in that uh, same uh, mold. You know, you know what you're going to get from them night in and night out. And uh, even the worst of Leva is going to be um, very, very strong because he does the little things. He wins the balls. He tackles. Um, he, chases down defend, or, uh, he chases down the ball. So I, I think he played, he played fantastic. Um, for me, I, I mentioned it, the two Brazilians were, were, were the big standouts for me, seeing Luis Felipe um, really step up in, in the past few matches. And I thought he, he saved us a number of times tonight. Um, and, and seeing him even bringing the ball up was fantastic. And providing some um, confidence with the ball at his feet was great. And then Felipe Anderson, again, provided a, a couple moments where I thought he could single-handedly change the match. Um, just wasn't the, the last bit of finishing. But uh, I thought he played well all night. Yeah, coming back a little bit to, to Lucas Leva, I thought he did more than expected. You know, he came to Lazio like the typical uh, midfielder that is very good in the stopping the opponents, recovering the ball, etc. But in the last matches, he has... He has done much more, not only because he's become the real leader in, the, in this team. And you can see it, you know, I said it in the last podcast. Uh, after the goal against Dinamo Kiev, he, he, all, the, all the other guys were embracing him. And he said, OK, concentrate. It's just started. We have to focus and not allow them to score. And, and, and then he starts scoring a lot. Uh, he didn't score uh, in Serie A. And today he scored his first goal in Serie A. I think he's already at three goals this season and uh, it's much more than he did in the last couple of years in Liverpool. So, you know, I think, I think this is a great signing and the fact that he's younger than Biglia means he, he will be able to play longer than him and it's a perfect fit for, for Lazio. So I'm really, I'm really happy uh, about Lucas Leva and it's probably the most encouraging thing going forward because it looks like If Chile Mobile is going down, Lucas Leva is going up and he can be really the leader in this team to push them to, to fight till the end. Yeah, I mean, if it, it, you know, when, when we lost Bilia um, and, and gained Leva, um, I think that's the biggest piece of quality that he has over him is the leadership ability, um, which, which brings this team together. And um, for, a, for a man that's been here for... Uh, only one season, you know, you could say he's a lot of the heart and soul of, of what they do. So um, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, he, what he does. And um, he was a much more attacking minded player during his Gremio days. Um, so you can see that coming out. He, he can make plays and um, he just never got or, or was leaned on to do that uh, a ton at Liverpool. Yeah, because Liverpool bought him like, a, like buying a trequartista. Then they had they decided to bring him back and uh, you know, play him like a, a midfielder uh, that has to stop the, the, the attackers, etc. So it, it's funny, it's funny. He, he evolved in his uh, European career. And going back to Luis Felipe, again, I thought he had a great performance. I think it was him who stopped 
a shot uh, in the first half that was nearly goal because Strakosha was down already. And it's really good uh, uh, that after two matches that could mentally kill him, you know, he missed the penalty against AC Milan in the Coppa Italia and then he made that mistake that uh, gave the, the, the penalty to, to Cagliari and, but he, he recovered and played really well uh, both on Thursday and tonight. I think he's stepping up and he, even if he's very young, he, he proved to be, you know, to have leadership to bring the ball out and try to play the ball instead of kicking it out as soon as possible. Yeah, the, the composure he has for, for such a young player is, is as good as any defender I've seen. And um, there were two moments that really stood out for me from Luis Felipe. There was one um, in the first half where I think Nani took a little bit of a dive. Um, and then uh, Bologna caught us on a counter. And there was a one-on-one. And Luis Felipe won the ball very cleanly. You know, had that been Wallace, I would have been scared to death. But um, Luis Felipe handled that. And then... Uh, early in the second half, uh, he did. He he had uh, he had one where he threw his, his body in front of goal, uh, where Strakosha was down, and uh, that very well could have been a Bologna goal. And uh, and you know if not for Luis Felipe being there, so he uh, he not only played well from the defensive standpoint, but bringing the ball up, he has a ton of composure. Um, and, and it's a real shame to be losing uh, De Vrij. Because uh, I think pairing him alongside De Vrij not only helps his growth, but uh, it really, really gives us something special to build. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a shame, especially because he's gonna go uh, for free, so Lazio won't get any money back for for De Vrij leaving the team. It's it's a shame, but a little bit like what happened with Biglia, right? They didn't find an agreement, and uh, and uh, he he's leaving uh, this summer. Uh, but yeah, Luis Felipe is great, and I don't know you and our listener, but I'm every time Wallace have the ball on his feet, I'm I'm worried. I'm more worried when Wallace has the ball in his feet than when uh, when a attacker against Lazio has it. I mean, he's so distracted, can make so many mistakes that yeah, it's terrible. It's dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. I think. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I hope this is going to be the last match of the season for him because uh, maybe Bastos and Casares can prove to be better, a better solution than, uh, than um, Wallace that, you know, has plenty of chances now. I mean, he started playing again, uh, what was it, in, in December and never played well, never convinced me completely. So I don't know why Inzaghi is giving him other chances. And uh, Lukaku, again, I know he wasn't fit, he wasn't uh, in great shape, but he comes in the last 45 minutes, the other team is tired and nothing. He pretty much didn't do nothing tonight. Yeah, I would agree. He's been a, he's been a disappointment. I, I, I was one to defend Lukaku all, all season. Um, I, I thought a lot of times he was put in a, in a position of... Uh, you know, of, of difficulty with such few minutes and being expected to come in and, and be the lightning rod that uh, led to a goal. But um, he's had some opportunities to do more, and, and we haven't seen it yet. So um, very disappointing from Lukaku. I, I think very similar to Nani. He, he didn't do anything overwhelmingly negative, um, but he didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, no. I don't know. He started so well the season, and we were pushing to say, "Yeah, he's ready to start from the beginning." No, not only come in in the last twenty-five minutes and change the match. He, he's the type of player that should be starting from the beginning. Instead, he's proving that Inzaghi was right at the beginning of the season to not start him. And uh, yeah, he's not good. Um, Jeb Rod Nielsen, Lucas was the revelation once again. He makes a positive impact everywhere on the pitch, and the team should be looking his leadership from now on to get courage and confidence. Luis Felipe also put in another good performance. Others seem to underperform at the moment. Don't know if underperform. I thought Felipe Anderson, even if he played, uh, you know, in not his best position, played quite well. De Vrij was decent. I don't remember any big mistakes from him. Uh, Parolo, he's running so much, you know, he was, you can't 
you can't blame Parolo. He always give everything. Um, not convinced from Marusic, but at least I can say he played much better than the last time. So there's an improvement there. But if you want to compete for the Champions League, I think this team has to play a little bit better, has to be a little bit dangerous. Everybody has to step up and perform better than tonight. Yeah, I agree. Um, it, it, it's fr from a collective standpoint, you know, they're very, very disappointing as a group. Um, but there were some some guys that th I thought did play well, and I think you named them. Um, uh, Parolo, I, I would say, pretty pretty consistently is is overlooked throughout the year. But you know what you're going to get out of him, Lucas Leva. We mentioned, um, and uh, De Vrij was solid. Um, did did everything you would expect. But, uh, but as a group, it wasn't there. There was a lot of walking around, very slow to move the ball forward, um, a lack of decisiveness. And against a, a team like Bologna, you would expect a little bit more. So, um, you know, it's, it was a challenging match and one that, uh, that they've got to move forward from. And I, I hate uh, that we consistently have to say this. Um, it seems like week in and week out, but they gotta, they got to move past this one. But uh, if they continue to play like this, then you know they'll they'll find themselves in Europa again if if we're lucky. Um, so we we've, we've got to move forward and play better. Yes, yes, and it's funny that probably the best team, the best match we played in Serie A in the last month or so was against Juventus, where we lost. But I thought Lazio played much better. Yeah, that game against Juve was was the one I'd say in this run of form that was probably our best match. But uh, you know, maybe we're still coming off of that where where their heads aren't in it and, and they're a little bit hungover from from how that game ended. So um, I, I don't know. But either way, I, I, again, this uh, international break is coming at the right time where they've got to get right uh, physically and mentally. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. Maybe, maybe, you know, they played so well against Juventus and they lost maybe that that demoralized the, the team, lot made them lose the confidence. I don't know. Uh, by the way, the doctor of Lazio, Dr. Rodia, just said that uh, there's a problem for Lulic. He will be out for 15 days, so two weeks. So I don't think he's going to be able to play against Benevento. That should be the next match. Uh, but no news about the other injuries. So I believe that Radu, uh, Miniko Isavic, etc. should be able to play next match next in two weeks' time. Um, Sean, before we go, um, let's talk about a little bit what you're doing in Texas for Lazio. Can you talk about your your project, your club? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I, I started the Texas Laziali. Uh, it's our supporters group here. Uh, we're based out of Houston, Texas. Um, not, uh, not an area where you would think there'd be a lot of Serie A or, or especially Lazio fans, but... Uh, but I actually I, I moved down here and, and I work for the major league soccer team here uh, with the Houston Dynamo. Oh, um, and wow. so we've we've yeah, we've got a we've got a group of soccer fans working in this uh, in this team and um, a lot of which are looking for new clubs to support on the European side, um, a lot of new fans. And so, uh, you know, I found a group of, of people that started getting into the, the Lazio matches with myself and started uh started asking me more and more questions about Lazio and um, started supporting the club. And so uh, I had decided, you know, myself, uh, I watch every Serie A match that I can, but I, I certainly watch every Lazio match and um, started finding, uh, you know, a lack of content uh, on Twitter and, and online. And um, Lazio Lounge was one of the, was probably the first English based account that I found. And you guys done such an incredible job providing content and, um, and so really inspired myself to, to, to create our Texas Laziali group and get more people passionate about uh, Lazio. And um, so we host watch parties for some of the bigger matches uh, where they actually air the Lazio matches on BN Sports. And uh, we try to come together occasionally and, uh, and I'll provide uh, video uh, content and, and some takes here and there on, uh, on our Laziali account. Uh, you guys can follow us at Texas Laziali and uh, try to provide some unique content, some uh, some goals. Every time Lazio scores, I try to provide that. You know, there was a lack of that uh, when I would not 
have a chance to uh, watch the Lazio matches. I would find very few uh, video highlights online. Um, so I try to provide that um, as well through our account. Yeah, you did. You, you're doing a great job. So if there's someone listening to us from Texas and you're a Lazio fan, get in contact with Sean to, to watch Lazio together. Sean, I didn't ask you why you became a Lazio fan. Yeah, so um, I actually spent most of my life growing up in Italy. My, uh, my family's from Gaeta. Ah, wow, and, cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, my dad's American. He was in the U.S. Navy. He had met my mom on one of his first tours of duty. Um, so we spent a lot of my childhood growing up in Italy. Um, and so uh, my family being from Gaeta in, in the Lazio region, um, grew up a Lazio fan. So I couldn't tell you when I became a fan. I just know that, uh, that, that I was born a fan. And so um, just grew up watching Lazio matches. And um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been my club, a uh, big part of uh, who I am and, and certainly very passionate about it. And, uh, and yeah, so I didn't get much of a choice. <laughs> cool, perfect. Gaeta is very nice, by the way. So uh, I can imagine you enjoyed living there. Yeah, very beautiful. So I, I didn't get to, get to live there a ton myself. We would go visit. Um, that's where, uh, where my mom grew up in oh, and okay. her family is there. I, uh, I spent, uh, I spent uh, a number of years in Napoli. Um, I spent a number of years in Catania, in Sicily, um, a couple years in Sardinia. So uh, before moving to the States permanently when I was uh, uh, 17. Oh, okay, so you speak very well Italian, I can imagine. Uh, I speak okay. It's, oh, uh, come it's on. been a while. It... After 17 years in Italy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you start to lose it after, after a bit. But yes, I do speak Italian. Uh, there are not enough uh, Italian guys there in Texas. We are everywhere. <laughs> They are. We are everywhere. But uh, I, I wish there were a few more. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Anyway, uh, congratulations for, for what you're doing. I think uh, it's amazing. And this brings me to, to the question, how embarrassing is it's 2018 and Lazio is probably the only top team in Serie A who hasn't got an English Twitter account. That, that's simply embarrassing. I mean, uh, wake up, it's 2018. I agree. I'd say, uh, you know, unfortunately, as much as I love our club, um, they take a while to get on board with things and, and they are very much old school and, and a little bit behind the curve and um, on the social media side and the marketing side. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's 2018. Maybe they'll, uh, they'll catch up. But my, my, my impression is that they, they think only about Rome and think that their catch area is only that. I don't know. They don't believe they are Lazio fan outside Italy. I mean, uh, let's not forget that players like Gascogne, uh, Miro Close recently, uh, Nesta, uh, Vieri, uh, a lot of very popular players played for Lazio. So you have to imagine, you have to understand that there's a lot of fans, Lazio fans, outside Italy. I'm, I'm you know, this is my... Uh, sixth year outside Italy and everywhere I, go, I went I found Lazio fan and pretty much they all I mean when I was in England they were all uh, you know last time they talk about Lazio was when uh, ITU is, was showing Serie A football so because there is not an, nothing on internet in English for Lazio and this is because the, 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 the club hasn't got even a website in English that's, that's terrible Yeah, it's disappointing from a, from a branding and marketing standpoint. You don't see a lot from Lazio, um, certainly outside of Rome. The disappointing thing is, is when I have friends uh, that go to visit Rome, uh, they come back with Roma gear because they, they, uh, they don't see anything else. So um, even just in, inside of Rome, it seems as if uh, you know, they need to do a little bit more. But You know, there, there are certainly, a, if, if Lazio wants to be recognized as a quote-unquote big club, um, they've got to do a little bit more outside. And I, I think that's where, you know, the English Premier League teams dominate. They do a fantastic job. Um, and, and then clubs like Barcelona, Real Madrid, they, they, they own a lot of um, the United States. And yep. I'd love to see Lazio come on, on the international uh, tour to the U.S. And, and start to have more of a presence out here. 
Um, but uh, until they do, they they won't um, they won't build that that audience. Yeah, yeah. I think in in the U.S. there's still big Premier Leagues. Premier League teams are are the most popular there. Serie A. Look. And that, yeah, but that's because that's all they see. Yeah. Um, that's because the games are aired. Um, they're in English. They're everywhere. Um, you know, and, and that's, as a Serie A fan, that's, that's always the challenge. And I, you know, part of my job is to talk to soccer fans all day. Um, and, and, you know, they're, they're English Premier League fans because that's what they're inundated with. Uh, and, and certainly the English Premier League does a fantastic job. Um, but, uh, but I'd love to see Serie A start to take more steps yeah. to do the same. And, and you saw it with, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to watch the, Netflix documentary that uh, Juve did, uh, but that yet. was brilliant. It was brilliant. It was very well done, and and those are the things I'd love to see Lazio do to help grow their audience. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Christopher Thomas, we may be struggling with a smaller team, but teams above us like Napoli and Juventus can grid out result against these teams defending with ten men. Lazio can't. Yes, that's true. Uh, especially in the first part of the season, we saw Lazio uh, beating Juventus, beating Milan. Uh, playing better than Inter, but didn't win. But then, you know, they draw against Spal, uh, they struggle against the other teams, and this is the problem. I don't know if it's the 3-5-1-1 that doesn't help against the small team that uh, defend with 10 men, or it's something structural with the team. But that's a fact. I don't know. Sean, what, what's your thought about this? I just think it's a really bad time right now. I think it's it's a combination of poor form. It's a combination of uh, lots of games and being tired. And uh, you know, I, I think maybe maybe the the formation. Uh, it's hard to say. Um, individually, some of the guys that we need to play better aren't playing uh, to their their capabilities. Um, I mean, we just saw Juventus draw this weekend in a in a match. So it's not like uh, other teams um, aren't facing the same thing. Uh, you know, that's, I think, the beauty about Serie A is, is every weekend, uh, the, those, those matches, you know, are up for grabs. And um, unfortunately, we're, we've been on the wrong side of a few of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. La, you ain't to draw against Spal. But I think, and, and we said it, I, I think when this, against this team that, you know, put the bus in front of the, of the uh, goal, you, you have to fill the box with players. And uh, like this... Lazio doesn't have that many players. You know, you have you're missing Milinkovic Savic. Um, you have Oli Parole and Immobile that that fill the box. Maybe you should try, uh, you know, in the last ten minutes to put Bastos in front as well because he's tall and you can put the ball high in the box and hope that he he gets it. I, I don't know. Probably yeah. At the moment, I yeah. Go. I on. just think our big our big players need to come up big, and mm. you know, I think that's what what happens with the Juventus. They uh, against against us, they had one shot on frame, and it was a it was a wonder goal from DiBala. Uh, you know, you see them against Tottenham in Champions League, and they're they're outplayed. They get a, two chances, and their top players bury those chances. You know, we had some chances uh, today, and unfortunately, we're not burying those chances. And top clubs, even when they're outplayed, um, and they have to eke out a win. They do it, and unfortunately, we're we're falling short in those areas, and we need a couple guys to come up with an individual performance, and they're not doing it. Yeah, I, I agree. I totally agree. Or, or you you hope that your star find a way to score, or otherwise, you need to fill the box. And probably this is the biggest uh, problem with the team. Lazio hasn't got, you know, that the big striker that fills the box and get the. When the ball is high, with the header scores and uh, and and uh, you know Chino Mobile is not that type of player. Casado is not that type of player. Felipe Anderson as well. Uh, Nani, same thing. So I think that's something missing. So you know, for example, I would love to have Kozak back. Uh, he was that type of player that, that that was very good. He was entering the last minutes, and you know, with the header, he's very tall. He was able to score a lot of goals. So since then we didn't have that type of player in the in the team I think. Yeah, well I think that's that's something to note for the transfer window. And, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, let's again let's knock on wood and hopefully we have some of that Champions League money 
I think we know we're going to have to spend some of it on a defender or two. Um, but uh, but we've said it since before the season started. Uh, the lack of having another quality striker uh, was probably going to come back and bite us. And it looks like it has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, to be, to be honest, we, we have like 30 million euros still available to spend, even though we don't qualify for the Champions League. This is due to the uh, summer transfer of, of last year, you know, the Keita, uh, Hood. We didn't spend all that money, so we still have a big part available already. So I really hope that Lotito and Tare will make uh, an important Uh, signing this summer, as you were saying, I think we need one or two defenders and another very good striker that can play near Chile Mobile uh, and have different skills from him so that, you know, we can vary a little bit, especially in this complicated match against a small team. Yeah, and if obviously if, if they end up selling uh, Milinkovic Savic, they'll, they'll come into an extra $100 million too. <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, you know, playing like that, I don't know he's going to have that much market. And as he has uh, still a couple of years uh, with Lazio, the contract, so maybe he can stay. Who knows? Maybe he's doing this on purpose, you know. He's playing badly <laughs> to stay for us, with us longer. Oh, well, I, look, I wouldn't be mad. I, I think, uh, you know, again, if we want to be considered one of these uh, big clubs, the big clubs are able to keep their players. And I think there's a, a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, very uh, similarities between what Napoli did and what Lazio can do going into next season. If, if we can have our own Scudetto pact and uh, come together and bring our best players back for next season, I think they can do something special. But uh, I guess we'll have to see. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Sean, thank you very much for joining me. It was my pleasure. And when you want to be back, just contact me. It's going to be a pleasure to have you back. Especially because you are much better than Alistair. Oh, I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully next time I'll be able to, to chat with Alistair as well. So I appreciate it. Grazie mille. Uh, e sempre forza Lazio. Thank you very much, Sean, and have a nice day. Bye. Ciao, Vittorio. Watching